cubes again. Actually, today is gonna be about math. Check it out. Hey, it's Annika, and today's video is going to be on some math activities, particularly how to use manipulatives in the classroom. So today's video is also a dollar find because I found all of these things at the dollar store so you can do this really cheap. I know I have heard from many high school, even middle school teachers say manipulatives don't work because they're too childish and that's just not true. I taught middle school math eighth grade and I use manipulatives for my intervention as well as my class time and it really kept students engaged as well as help them to understand concepts that they were not catching before. Manipulatives are meant to be a way to make connections in a concrete manner for something that is generally very abstract. So we need to be using manipulatives all the way through school until graduation. And I really don't think these are very childish. My kids always enjoy playing with them, so check them out. Obviously, the first thing I have are the math die. You can use these to do probability, statistics. You can have students use it to practice their computation. Lots of things can be done with this. So I recommend getting some of these. And they come in like four different colors at the dollar store. So you guys can get these and use them in color-coded groups to differentiate. Love it. Another manipulative that elementary school teachers tend to use a lot because they have things like this in their classroom are phone cubes. Now these cubes can be used to do any kind of counting to help them learn how base tens work. Uh, it can be used for a lot of different things, but they also have them in different colors. And I actually saw an activity where they were having them create a Rubik's cube and the challenge was to make sure that all of the colors were included on every single side without being repeated. It was actually kind of a difficult task, but it was really abstract thinking, but it was a really cool activity and it really was a critical thinking piece. And you know, it's all about making sure that these students have skills to take with them into the 21st century and critical thinking is going to be very important for that. Another idea I have is Legos. They have these baseboards and the different pieces of Legos in different colors at the dollar store. They actually had four or five different colors, so you could get great sets of these. They come in a bag and they have a mix of sizes, all the way from a single to up to 10. So this is something that they can use to create visually what you're having them teach. I think they can be used in multiple ways. The first thing I was thinking of was creating some problems for them where they have to decide what all do you still need to complete a square, a rectangle. Letting students use it to determine area and perimeter. This is a really great thing to use for your geometric shapes. But another thing that you could do with this is creating a multiplication table. This is a 16 by 16, so you could do a 12 by 12 on here, and the students can make this themselves so that they learn how those multiplication tables are created, and making it themselves will help them to remember it a little bit better. I like that for this as well. You can also use it to determine 3D spaces because you can build on it. So I thought that was a really cool thing to think about too. And then this idea is something I used a lot in my classroom. My students loved it. It was a really great practice for them for computation. I did this with my eighth graders in their intervention class to build on their deficits with multiplication, division, uh, and even addition and subtraction, particularly with positive and negative numbers. So here's what we did. I actually had the giant cards and I did this as a group because it was such a small group, uh, but you can actually have them do this with partners. You basically split the deck into half. If it's a face card, then it's worth 10 and everything else is worth the number that's on the card. If it's a black, it's a positive number, and if it's a red, it's a negative. And so the students have to quickly calculate whatever way you're doing it for that moment, multiplication, addition, whatnot, in 
the fastest way possible. You know, this really just helps students to very quickly spit out computation so that they're not focusing on the computation as much as actually going through the steps. When students have to think of a lot of steps but they get stuck on addition or division, then they're not going to remember the next step that they were supposed to go to. And then it takes them longer, they get lost, they get confused. So being able to do computation quickly is very important. This really helped my students be able to focus on the tasks at hand because they were able to immediately turn around and go to the next step because their computations increased so drastically. I loved this game. My students love this game. It really helped them improve. So those are the ideas that I had for manipulatives. I hope that you enjoyed the video. If you've tweaked this for your unique classroom, please leave it in the comments below on how you did that. If you liked the video, hit the like button below. Subscribe if you still have not. And I'll see you guys next week. Bye.